All right, so two five solving systems using matrices. This is gonna be on page 44 of your notes. Um, so we're gonna go over. So the first couple of slides are not on your paper. So don't freak out, don't have to write them down. Just kind of talking about what a matrix is. So intro to matrices. A matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers in rows and columns, okay? The numbers in a matrix are called elements. The number of rows and the number of columns um, vert vertical determine the dimensions of the matrix, okay? So the dimensions of a matrix are row by column. So how many rows, how many columns? So the way I remember that, have you ever heard of RC Cola? No, no one's ever heard of RC Cola? Well, it's an it's a off-brand Coca-Cola. Um, RC Cola is how I remember, it. rows and columns. Okay, this is what a matrix looks like. So it's in a square or rectangular array, array enclosed by two brackets. Uh, and to be specified, you have, to be specific, when you are numbering them again, it's your rows, so rows, and then your columns. So how many rows do you have? How many columns, okay? So when we talk about rows, think about like stadium seats. You're in row, blah, 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 right? They don't tell you to go sit in column. They tell you to go sit in a row. So rows go horizontally. So this is row one, row two, row three, and columns go vertically. Column one, column two, column three. So because there's three rows and three columns, this is called a three by three. Does that make sense? Okay. So why are these important? It's because you can use a matrix to represent and solve a system of equations without writing the variables, okay? So here's where we start. So on your paper, you should have this problem. It says systems and matrices are BFFs, right? So example one we have here, we have two X plus Y equals nine and X minus six Y equals negative one, okay? So that's and it says, um, how can you represent the system equation with the matrix? So the first thing you do is write the system in standard form. So our system in standard form means you have AX plus BY equals C. Am I in standard form? Yes. Then it says, list out only the coefficients in your constants. So for the first one here, my coefficients are two, one, and my constant is nine. So I list them out two, one, and nine. For my second equation, my coefficients are one, negative six, and negative one. One, negative six, and negative one. Check. And then the last step is to put brackets around it. Bam. And now you've taken a, your system and turned it into a matrix. Terrible? Well, why is it terrible? Okay. All right, let's try another one. Mm -hmm. That's the matrix. So that's how your system became a matrix. Okay, let's try another one. So this one, we have two X plus Y equals negative three and three Y equals five. You wanna make sure your system is written in standard form. So AX plus BY equals C. Well, this, this equation is, but is this one written in standard form? No. Um, we talked about yesterday, well, a couple before, um, about if you're missing a variable, you can put a zero in its place, right? So we're gonna rewrite this in standard form. So we have zero X plus three Y equals five. And now it's in standard form. All right, so now we're gonna write our matrix again. Write out your constants and your coefficients. So our coefficients are two, one, and our constant is negative three. So we have two, one, negative three. And in the second equation, our coefficients are zero, three, and our constant is five. Zero, three, five. And there's your matrix. How do we feel? Easy enough? Yeah? All right. Now, this also applies when you have a three variable system. 
you want to make sure that it's in standard form. So your AX plus BY plus CZ equals D format. This one's good to go. Is this one good to go? No, no it's missing a, a variable. I'm just going to sneak it in there. It's missing Z, Z so I'm going to put in plus zero Z. Now I'm just going to list off the coefficients and constants. So in the first row, I have four, negative three, five, negative 13. So four, negative three, five, negative 13. In the second row, I have one, three, zero, three. One, three, zero, three. In the third row, I have two, four, three, 17. So we have two, four, three, 17. And that is your matrix. How do you feel about turning a system into a matrix? Is it easy enough? Cool, awesome. So why would we wanna turn a system into a matrix? Is because eventually it helps us, we solve it like that. Now we need to be able to go backwards. So we gotta go backwards. So right now we just did system to matrix. Now we're gonna do a matrix to a system, okay? So when you are given the matrix, you can turn it back into a system. Remember that column one is your X, are your X values, column two are your Y values, and column three are your constants. So in the system, you create a brace. I have five X plus two Y equals seven. Here, do I have an X? No, it's zero, right? So that means there's no X. I do have a Y. I have one Y equals nine. Was it terrible going backwards? Okay, I would like for you to try example two on your own. So flip it over and you should see example two. So you're gonna try example two. All right, so let's check what you did. So your first, your first column represent your, your X's, right? Second column represents your, and the last column are your constants. So this equals two X, do I have a Y? No equals six. Last one I have five X minus two Y equals one. What would you see as one? Yes. How do we feel about going from matrix back to system? Good. All right. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to use the matrix to help us solve the system. So you remember how for the past couple of days, we've been doing all of this algebra to solve these problems. If we are comfortable writing our systems into matrices, then the calculator can do it for us. Okay. So um, what you're going to have to remember is that you go to www.desmos.com slash matrix. So it's not a graphing calculator. It's actually a matrix calculator. So again, desmos.com forward slash matrix. Okay, if you have a hard time getting there, if you just go to Google and type in Desmos matrix, it'll be the first one that pops up. 
Okay. So the first thing that you do is select new matrix. So you see how it says how many rows, how many columns. That's why you gotta be understanding rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. And then you're gonna input the information, okay? Uh, so you're gonna put how many rows and how many columns. And then you're gonna input your elements. And then you're gonna press enter and save the matrix. Okay, so we're gonna do from the beginning with example number one. So let's go back to our notes. On example number one, we're gonna turn this into a matrix. Are we comfortable turning this into a matrix? Because these are, so this is our first row, the first column, second column, third column, fourth column. So in our first column, I have one, two, and three. In my second column, I have negative two, negative three, and four. In my third column, I have negative two, negative five, and one, because if there's no variable, then if there is no coefficient, it is one, Casper to friendly one. If there's no variable, it's a zero, right? And then I have my constants, which are six, seven, and two. So this is my matrix. How big is this matrix? How many rows are there? Three, and how many columns are there? So I have a three by four. So this is what I'm putting into the calculator, that I have a three by four. So right here where it says how many rows do you have, I have three. Right here where it says how many columns do you have, I have four. And now I'm gonna input those numbers. So putting those numbers in, I have one. And if you hit tab, it takes you to the next one. Negative two, tab, negative two, tab, six. Then I have two, tab, negative three, tab, negative five, tab, seven. Tab three, tab four, tab one, tab two, okay? So we input those in, and again, all I did was hit tab and type, tab and type. And then you're gonna hit enter, and that saves your matrix. So I press enter and my matrix is saved. Okay? If you're looking at the steps, the next step that it tells us is we're going to type R-R-E-F. And what that stands for is reduced row echelon form. And basically what we want this to do is to solve our matrix for us. So we're going to type R-R-E-F. And we're going to put parentheses. And we want matrix A. So we're going to put an A there. and hit enter. And there's the reduced row echelon form of our matrix. So it tells us that our new matrix is one, zero, zero, four, zero, one, zero, negative three, zero, zero, one, and two. Okay. Did y'all hit enter? So those are your answers. So now we now know so our matrix that we got from reduced row echelon was one zero 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 one zero 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 one four negative three and two. So notice how this right here you get one 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 one. Has anyone ever played tic tac toe? And the goal is to get three in a row. So tic tac toe, it works. The system has a solution. The solution is your last column. This is your solution. This, this is your X, this is your Y, and this is your Z. So it says, what is the solution? My solution is four, negative three, and two.
So we wrote the matrix, identified the number of rows and columns. We input it into the matrix calculator and we found the reduced row echelon form and we got tic-tac-toe three in a row. Yeah, so therefore our solution is four, negative three and two. If this was a word problem, then X and Y and Z would have values, right? And we would write those in. Okay, um, I'm gonna put up two and I want you to try two from the beginning. And I'm gonna help, I'll be around to help. Hint for two is that I'm missing my Z. So this is actually a zero, okay? All right. How are we doing? I mean, if you don't like it, well, you can always go back and do all the algebra. Mm -hmm. But you're going to each that you need a number for each one. Mm -hmm. I made you learn all the algebra, and now you should appreciate this a lot more, right? All right, so let's see how we did. So your matrix should have been set up as one, negative three, negative one, negative nine, three, negative seven, one, negative nine, negative two, three, zero, and seven. So that's your initial matrix that you put in, right? After you input that as a three by four, uh, what was your new matrix? Anyone? Zero, zero. Okay, and then what's...
And then we had zero, zero, one, and what? Four. So again, this is our solution. So our solution is written as an ordered triple. So you have negative two, one, and four. Okay. You all even see me do it in Desmos again? Yeah, anyone? I can. So new matrix, I'm gonna make it a three by four. I made too many rows. And I'm gonna input. Notice how, unless you're starting completely over, it's gonna give you a B and that is perfectly fine. Um, just make sure that when you're doing this, the fourth step, instead of writing A, you write B. So I have one tab, negative three, tab, negative one, tab, negative nine, tab, three, tab, negative seven, tab, one, tab, negative nine, tab, negative two, tab, three, tab, zero, tab, seven, tab. And I hit enter. Uh oh. All right, so I have it. I'm going to hit enter to save it. So notice this time I'm typing R R E F, but because the name of my matrix changed, I have to put B instead of A. Okay, that's all that happens there. And again, the last column is my solution. And I know it's a solution because I have a tic-tac-toe, right? All right, that is it. How do we feel?